Hey Rams, my name is Adam Carlson. And I'm Kenny Carls. For this week's K-Ram, we're jumping right in with a set of twins here at Rampart with the unusual hobby of downhill and freeride mountain biking. Since the Osborne brothers are so talented at the sport, we wanted to take a closer look. The Osborne bros, Colton and Zach, are bikers who do all kinds of crazy tricks and stunts. We went and interviewed them to get more information on what they do. Unbelievable. So Zach and Colton have basically been biking since they could walk. They got their first set of wheels on, um, I don't know, when they were probably a year and a half old um, in terms of little scooters. And ever since then, they have had wheels under them. Um, a large part of that was due to their, their dad and their influence of their dad. Um, he was an avid mountain biker growing up. So um, that was a big part of it. Um, and then we are just super outdoorsy people. So they've always been outside. Uh, my dad took me up to the Trestle Bike Park about seven years ago and just got into it from there. So there's free ride, which is actually what I do most of is free ride, which is like the biggest jumps, biggest features. And then there's downhill, which is just riding fast over the gnarliest terrain. And then there's enduro, which is like a bit of downhill and going uphill. And then there's cross country, which is like more of an endurance, but on trails. So it's a team sport if you're on a team, but like I'm what you would call a privateer. I don't ride for a team, I ride for myself. I have brands that support me, but I don't ride for them. Uh, I practice whenever I have my free time, like off of school, and then in the summer, it's every weekend that I go up to Trestle and, and practice. Uh, it's just the adrenaline and just the friends that go with it too. Uh, the scariest thing I've ever done was probably the hardest trail that I've ever done and it was a pro line trail and I have gotten injured but not too too bad. What got me into biking was probably uh, Colt and Zach. They got me into mountain biking. Um, like extreme, like I said, two years ago, when I first met them, when I kind of first like started hanging out with them a lot, I would say don't be scared to try something out of your comfort zone. There's, and let people push you to do it. You know, Colton has pushed me to do, to be a better at it, to be, you know, less, less fearless about it, you know? And always start out with baby steps, you know, work your way up. You don't have to go out and send the biggest jump you see out there. You don't have to go send the most steep, rocky trail you have to. You can start on like a casual flat trail with little jumps, you know, just work your way up slowly. It doesn't, cause it all won't come to you overnight to be some all sudden pro, you know, it's kind of just don't be scared to start building your way up. Wow, that is so cool. This has been Quentin Lyons reporting for k -Rap. Uh, it's just a bunch of people who like going fast over a bunch of gnarly terrain. It's cool to take a look at some of Rampart's less recognized hobbies. Good job, Zach and Colton. Rampart has some very talented students participating in the district's gymnastics team. The team is approaching the end of the season, and KRAM wanted to see how it's going. Girls from all across D20 have the opportunity to be part of the district gymnastics team. Rampart's gymnast shared with us what their favorite thing about gymnastics was. I think my favorite thing about gymnastics is getting to learn new skills. Um, it just gives me an adrenaline rush that I love. I really like gymnastics because um, you're able to do your own routines. It's really fun. It's um, compared to club, it's not as serious. You're allowed to like let loose. And you know, if you like make a mistake, it's not like the biggest deal. Unlike most sports teams at Rampart, gymnastics isn't practiced at the school. So we practiced at Stars Gymnastics, which is down by UCCS. And a typical practice um, looks like we usually come in around two o'clock and stretch for the ones that can make it at two o'clock. We usually get time on there because they do have other teams, but they let us um, go to the, like all of our apparatuses, which is good. We usually have floor first, so we'll do skills and routines on floor and then people will then move to whatever event they want to work on after that. The team also participates in several competitions each year. This year with COVID, competitions are a little bit wacky. Um, 
So we will go into the gym a few minutes before competition starts, actually, um, which is just enough time for a warm up and stretch. And then we will go to our first event, we'll warm up that event, and then compete the event right after. And then we rotate through all the events like that. We score points on each individual, each individual apparatus. The girls get scored on style, technique, posture, um, skills, about everything that comes to do with gymnastics. Because gymnastics is a district team, Rampart students get to work with many gymnasts from all across District 20. Yeah, I love being on the district team, um, mainly because there's not a lot of girls from Rampart. So being on the district team opens it up to anyone that wants to do it. Everybody's there. We have people that are from like classical academy, people might do 20. We even have like somebody who's homeschooled and like I would never meet these people if it wasn't for gymnastics. So I really like it, honestly. Actually, it's interesting. I mean, it's bringing everybody together as a family from all different schools and all different aspects. So it's been good. I like it. This is Isabel Harrison reporting for KRAM. Finish strong, ladies. The theater program is hard at work producing their next musical, Little Women. It's happening on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Every year, the theater program here at Rampart performs a musical. This year is Little Women. So it's about this family of four girls, and you know, their mother. And so their father is away in the war, and it's really about the main character, Jo, who is the second oldest sister. And she's really just trying to make a name for herself in writing. So she writes these plays for her, her sisters, they all perform them, and it, it's really about her own independence in this world. There's a whole lot of family drama that goes on. Um, there are some sad moments, but uh, it's mostly about Jo and her family and her like sticking to her own guns and achieving her dreams. <laughs> yeah, so I play Theodore Lawrence the third, but he goes by Laurie. Yeah, so my character is essentially this neighbor boy to the main character, Joe, and he is the son of this cranky old man who lives across the street from them. And essentially he ends up falling in love with Joe, but then it just gets complex. Joe is a very passionate person. She's the second oldest sister in the March family. Um, she wants to be a writer, she wants to travel the world, she has all these big dreams. She's really honestly so much fun to play. <laughs> the entire story, like, there's not a bad moment in the show in my opinion. It's just such a great full storyline. All the students involved are putting tons of time and effort into this production. We asked why they love the performing art and what makes it worth it to them. Theater has always been like one of my favorite things. Like. It's an odd feeling, but like, it feels like I'm most myself when I'm playing someone else. Like, I just love acting so much. I think, I personally, I, my personality is just to perform, so being able to make people happy, or at least to convey a really powerful message, that's my motivation. So being able to present this to an audience and know that I had an impact on them, that's really powerful. I'm looking for an opportunity for these kids to have something that feels normal, to do a performance and to have an audience and to be able to show off their talents. Finally, we looked behind the scenes in the pit orchestra and what they do to push the musical into a full-fledged production. So we provide the entire soundtrack. If you, if you feel like you're sitting down when you watch the musical and the actors on stage are like the movie screen, we're the sound system underneath the stage that is bringing it to life and adding all the sound effects as well as like the melodies for the singers to sing along with. When it's raw, when it's right there, when there's actual in, uh, present musicians playing, uh, not only are they able to adapt to the scene much more so that the singers can have more freedom in their, uh, when, they, when they sing and the actors can move around more and they can really put some more emotion to it, not only the musicians but the actors because the musicians are there. It, Peter Orchestra is part of the musical and we're playing music for it. Uh, that's the, one of the biggest parts of the musical is the music. It, it, it really just brings the entire like vibe together. A lot of hard work. It's going to take a lot of practice, especially um, musicals are very complex, especially this one. You have to get used to it. You have to see it coming because there's a lot coming at you. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the show. Uh, the students I've heard singing sound great and the acting is phenomenal. The stage and the sets look really good and the pit orchestra sounds great. So it's really, it's really been a joy so far. I'm really looking forward to bringing it to life. The musical will be performed on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of April. 
If you can't make or would rather rent the performance, you can purchase a recording of it shortly after the performance is finished. Signing off for KRAM, this is Adam Carlson. If you would like to purchase tickets, check the description of this episode. Two of our Rampart traditions are back. Sound us begin soon for the annual dodgeball tournament and peach fuzz volleyball tournament. Rampart Stuco is bringing back two classic traditions. The dodgeball and peach fuzz volleyball tournaments are back. There are two separate tournaments you can form a team for. Dodgeball is April 17th at noon in the gym. And peach fuzz volleyball is April 21st at 6 p.m. in the gym. Sign up packets and info are outside of room 107. Form your team, sign up, and have fun. This week's student humor piece hits the hallways of Rampart with some ridiculous questions. William Mahar and Danny Kaminsky are in the field asking Rampart students confusing questions to see what answers they'll get. What's crack a lacquer, Rampart? I'm William Mahar, today's host of today's segment, where we ask regular questions and get ridiculous answers. Now, I'm going to turn you to our main host, Danny Kuklinski. Can you slash have you eaten a sock? No. Uh, no comment. Would you like to eat Evolution exists, so then why don't pigs have wings? I don't know. How many toes does a glove have? <laughs> okay, <laughs> can you please demonstrate how a zipper works? <clears throat> you grab it by the little zipper, the zipper. What about from the top? From the top, oh, that's the tricky one. If evolution exists, why don't pigs have wings? You know, they haven't been drinking a bread bowl. Do you... Can you elaborate on that, please? You said what? I said do you? Do I what? Oof. You're not making sense here. Do you? Yes. Do you? Yes. <laughs> um, I try and do it about every other day. It kind of evens up a few times a week. So I don't think you're understanding the question. How do I fool a tuna to go onto land? <laughs> it's very complicated. Uh, you start with the mouse trap, one of the glue ones, the, the really unethical ones, um, and then you put uh, shockingly enough, you put tuna on it. Uh, little known fact, tunas are cannibals, so they'll fall right for it. Um, how, how far can you walk? Uh, until my legs don't want to walk anymore. How hard is rocket science? Incredibly hard. How hard is rocket science? Very hard. How hard is rocket science? Pretty easy. Fill a, fill a water bottle with water really fast, it will fly. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. I'm again your co-host, William Mahar, of today's segment, where we asked regular questions and got irregular answers. Maybe asking how we came up with this idea? I really don't know. I was kind of eating a box of Cheez-Its and went along with it. Have fun. <laughs> Goodbye. Signing off, this has been Adam Carlson. And Kenny Carls. See you next week, Rams. What answers they get, they get. They're get. They're get. To see what answers they'll get. Panda Express beef and broccoli is the biggest shame uh, to the food industry. Uh, it's all beef, or all broccoli, no beef, and I, I just feel cheated every time I get it. Fantastic job. Thank you.